Hello students and welcome again to another video. I'm your teacher, Mr. Flynn, and today we're going to talk about radiometric dating. Uh, I want you to write down this definition for radiometric age dating, okay? And it provides an estimate of the age of material by comparing the relative amounts of a radioactive isotope and its daughter isotope. Now, don't get caught up in the, the these words here, okay? I want you to let's clarify some of these concepts. So the radioactive isotope is what we've identified as a substance that is going to decay, okay? It can decay in a variety of ways, alpha particles, beta particles, okay? And it's turning into something new, and that new substance is the daughter isotope, okay? It's being deriving itself from that original isotope that we're examining. So if we come down here, we have a table of these parent and daughter isotope pairs. Um, one that you're probably familiar with is carbon dating, okay? The carbon isotope that we used is carbon-14, and we know that it's going to decay into nitrogen, okay? And if you notice, it's still nitrogen-14. It's just a neutron is turning into a proton, so it has a beta emission, okay, beta minus. And its half-life is 5,000, almost 6,000 years, okay? This is only useful for short time frames, okay? If we're studying ancient civilizations within the last couple thousand years, that's something we can use. We can we know that there's a certain amount of carbon that was present, and we can then compare it to how much nitrogen-14 is present. And because we know there's a ratio there, we can determine what its age is because we know that originally this carbon, okay, there's like a certain amount of carbon-14 for every certain amount of carbon that we're examining, like a tree branch. And if we found this, let's, just, let's use a tree, tree branch as an example. If we found a tree branch from a couple thousand years ago, it's going to have a certain percentage of carbon-14 atoms present. And if we can count up all the nitrogen-14 atoms that are present thousands of years later, we know that a certain number of these decayed. And then using that ratio, we can make an estimate of how old that branch is. Okay, but when it comes to doing things that are much older, like dinosaurs, okay, and examining bone or not old bones, but the rocks and the different structures that um, existed millions of years ago, okay, we can make those predictions with different isotopes with longer half lives. Okay, and the thing we need to keep in mind is that not everything is going to be perfectly preserved for millions, thousands, hundreds, millions of years. Uh, over time, there's going to be some error that exists because nature has a way of eroding materials, but scientists can get a good idea of how old something is based on this relationship of isotopes. Because we would predict that there'd be this much in the beginning and over time it decays into something else. And we know what that thing is, that thing is decaying into, so we can make a prediction. Okay, all right, thanks for watching.